It's the Google Pixel 8a versus the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE in a fairly well-requested video. I can see why, price-wise, at least MSRP, which we'll talk about a little bit more at the end because I do think there are reasons why you'd buy each at certain price points, but they're fairly close together. $600 for the S23 FE versus $500 for the Pixel 8a. Links in the description, by the way, if you are planning on buying them, does help the channel. And also, the main thing is these seem to be the focus of some uh, pretty uh, heavy carrier discounts. In fact, AT&T, I think you get the Pixel 8a without a trade-in, by the way, for 3 bucks a month. And I think it's like 4 bucks a month or maybe a little bit more, 5 bucks a month for the S23 FE. So these are devices that you might be deciding between. And I can see that because without an A55, the S23 FE has really become the Samsung mid-range option, even though it's priced a little bit higher than I would like for a mid-range phone. If we think the 8A is expensive, well, then $600 takes that even further. Let's talk about design of the two. S23 FE, really no surprises. Samsung design has been stagnant for a few years now, and for the lower-cost devices, that seems to help, but for the upper price stuff, it, it kind of hurts. It makes everything kind of the same. So a lot of people have gotten bored with this design, but if you like the fact that it looks a little bit more premium and it's in line with the more expensive devices, then you get more of the same here with the S23 FE. And you, uh, with the 8A, you kind of get the evolution, uh, even though it's iterative, of the Pixel design. We're moving towards the Pixel 9 now, where it's going to have more of these curvier edges and softer surfaces and stuff like that. You do have the plastic build, or at least the plastic back. It is still in a metal frame on the 8a so that's something to consider a lot of people think that's a bonus a lot of people don't want to carry a case around they want to enjoy the design of the phone still feels nice love the matte plastic on here i don't think it feels cheap and it feels solid so that's good but if you want the glass back you do get that on the s23 fe with the metal frame as well 6.1 inch display on the 8a 6.4 inch display over here both 1080p both 120 hertz it's not, unlike when, it seems like 6.5 inches is the point when devices start to feel large. Because even though it's 6.1 versus 6.4, I don't feel a significant difference in the hand between these two. Whereas if I were to bring in the 8, A55 at 6.6 inches, that starts to feel like a larger device in the hand. So take that as, as you will, the, the difference there. But I, if you like a more compact device and you're looking at the Pixel 8a, don't necessarily just default to the 8a because it has that 6.1-inch display. Both of these feel, uh, feel relatively comparable in the hand. Let's talk about those displays. Google has done a significantly better job this year with the actual display on the 8a. In previous years, this wasn't even close. It was a blowout. The S23 FE would just knock the, the Pixel display display out of the water not the case anymore i still need to, to to ramp up the brightness all the way on the 8a to get it to a place where i like it but it's more saturated than it used to be it's poppier it's not a nice display the s23 fe seems to be the last of an old guard where samsung is going to those more natural displays as they did on the s24 ultra and the a55 but this is the more traditional poppy or bright excellent saturated display so i do feel that the s23 fe still has the better display but it's a lot closer than it used to be the, the, the pixel display is quite a nice this year let's talk about performance because that's where you're going to see it more a lot of the conversation uh skewed towards look tensor 3 over here on the left Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 over here for the S23 FE. And I understand benchmark-wise, the S23 FE is probably going to do a little bit better, even though it's a little older. The chip is now a couple years old over here for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But here's, here's the thing. Don't just ignore the tensor. Because, oh, this is an Exynos. It overheats. It can't, whatever, whatever. These are very comparable in performance. I can tell you that from just day-to-day -day usage, even on gaming, even on the rest of it, because the A uh, the the S23 FE with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is getting a little long in the tooth at this point. So don't so don't take that just think it's a blowout just because it benchmarks better. Here's the other thing. If you want to say that oh, the tensor overheats and all the rest of it and you know blah 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 and the Snapdragons are better at that, if you remember how quickly we forget the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, not the Plus, wasn't that great in that department. This thing didn't, I want to say it had heating problems, but I did say it would get warmer than the, the Snapdragons we'd had uh, since. Not the best on power management, not the best on battery life, which we'll talk about in a moment. So don't just you know dismiss the Pixel 8a because it has a Tensor versus a Snapdragon in here, because I can tell you what, Snapdragons had its problems too. 
And that's why I was so shocked that they did not put the the 8 Plus Gen 1 in here because I feel like that would have made this device an absolute home run, even at $600. But this just the plain old 8 Gen 1, you're really not having it. You're going to get comparable performance. 8 gigs of RAM in both of these, so that's not something. Let's talk about the battery life. Five and a half, six hours, if you're careful on the S23 FE. I could get easily over six hours, six and a half hours. If you really push it, if you're careful, if you turn the brightness down, you could get seven hours on your Pixel 8a. That's a difference, okay? When you start talking an hour's difference, when you start talking how much you have to do to kind of trick it to get the battery to perform better, that's a significant uh, a number, I think, at least an hour there, especially when you're talking over six hours of screen on time. Recharge times are pathetic on both. 25 watt uh, fast, char- fast charging on the S23 FE, which is like 18 watt, whatever the, whatever laughable number they put on the Pixel devices now, but neither one of them is going to be a speed demon and really rip through. Here's where you start getting some real differences for the Pixel device. Cameras, it's a blowout. The, the S23 FE camera is goofy. I don't know why. I've had samples of it before. I'm not going to... They're soft. They're weird. It does weird things with the subject of the photo. It's but Whereas you got the 64 megapixel pixel camera, computational photography, all the rest of it over here. So then, you know, easy check mark, I think, for the Pixel 8a. Support. Seven years of support over here. We still have this six, six months old at this point, but you still have another three-ish, four years of support over here for the S23 FE. So it's not too bad. It's not a big difference, but you do get a nice long clock over here, and that includes major upgrades of Android and all the rest of it. You know, it, S23 FE is running 6.1. You know, it was kind of weird that they had that discussion for a while, Samsung did, about whether the uh, One UI 6.1 was even coming to these devices, these older devices, especially with a generation, uh, with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But it's got 6.1, doing fine. You know, I could kind of hold the bar here. It's tough to do behind the camera. You get circle of search. You could do all that. You get kind of the AI camera stuff. We could go in here. I was doing stuff before, but you could kind of go here, and you, I could I can do a little circle here, and it'll it'll generate the the thing, and then I can kind of tap it and hold it and move it around, and then to, so I could do that stuff. So you do get the AI stuff, and it works well, and it's snappy on the S23 FE. So don't think that just because this is an older Samsung that you're kind of left behind on the AI stuff because Gemini. And I know that Gemini Nano is coming here in June, you know, maybe. So, you know, if anything, it's kind of goofy to say the S23 FE is a little bit ahead in the AI race going into things. So, all right, let's talk about the pricing now. $600, $500. Realistically, you're not paying that for either, okay? If you can get this for sub $450, I think you're doing really well on the S23 FE. I think there are enough advantages. This might be just my bias. I like One UI a little bit better than the Pixel experience right now. Phone-wise, these are very close. Performance-wise, you're getting great performers on both. Builds are, are solid in their own way for these two devices. So it really comes down to pricing and, and which one you're getting cheaper. So if it's a if it's a per monthly thing, you know, if you like One UI, then get pick up the Samsung for five bucks a month. If you like the Pixel experience, which you know you do, or you either do or you don't then go ahead and pick up the 8A. If you're a camera, shutterbug, whatever, the 8A is going to be the choice. You want that extra software support, the 8A is going to be the choice. Everything else, I think you're going to want to skew towards the Samsung, to be perfectly honest. You know, it was designed to be a more powerful phone. I think it is a slightly more powerful phone, benchmark-wise, even though I said, like, you know, performance is comparable. Battery life a little weaker, but I think the overall package at a price, right, sub 450. These can't be $100 apart. If it's $100 a part at MSRP, pick up an 8A, okay? It's not even a conversation. However, if it starts to get even or the uh, Samsung gets a little lower price, then I would lean towards the, the Galaxy. But I, I could totally see why people – I totally see why people would pick up an 8A and enjoy it. I really have been enjoying it. I love it. You know, there's some goofy Google things you have to get through. But I think it's a really solid device. It's a solid performer. I just don't love it at $500. It's worth $500, but – you know, they run those sales and you could get it cheaper and all the rest of it. So if you can get this for like sub 400, I think you're doing well with the 8A. If you can get this for sub 450, I think you're doing really well for the Galaxy S23 FE. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Delicious day.